Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. This is nominally my 1000 subscriber special, though I had envisioned something much more complicated for it. Uh, all along, what I wanted to do for this special was to go to Mars in realism overhaul, so really Mars, not Duna, right? I've never been to Mars, never even attempted to go to Mars, so this would be a special thing to do. And we will be attempting to go to Mars, but I had wanted to do it in a certain style using the SLS, the space launch system that NASA is developing. But trying to figure out the mission mode using the SLS is a little bit difficult because, the, first of all, there are numerous versions of the SLS, so I had to decide which version I'm going to be taking to Mars in the first place, and then how many launches I need in order to get my assets into space. And so... I'm still working out the kinks on that and also trying to make the video in a particularly special way is uh, giving me a little bit of trouble. So anyway, lots of stuff to do with that. And uh, I also wasn't particularly enamored of the performance of the SLS. And so that led me to think about uh, another Mars rocket another proposed Mars rocket, and uh, the more perceptive of you will have already noticed uh, what this is. Uh, this is, of course, um, technically the Nova C8, uh, though the difference between the Nova and the Mars uh, basically has to do with whether you have fins or a skirt like this. So uh, you could call it the Saturn C8 if you'd like. Uh, the main difference between the Saturn V and the Saturn C8 is that every place where the Saturn V had five of those things, the C8 had eight, and so therefore eight F1s, and in the second stage, eight J2s. Now, this is X, and I'll explain that in a little bit, but this was another rocket that was uh, conceptualized as eventually a Mars rocket. And uh, though very quick, uh, things changed very quickly. First, uh, it was designed as a straight out uh, moon rocket uh, to avoid any rendezvous. They'll go straight to the moon and straight back, no lunar rendezvous. Once the lunar orbit rendezvous was uh, the mission mode, they didn't need this anymore. Uh, this was overkill. Uh, then it started to be thought about as a Mars rocket. And actually, there were numerous configurations of the Nova, and uh, even of the Saturn C8. Uh, so this is just one possible configuration. And Nova, there was lots of proposals for the Mars mission as well. So we are going to see if such a thing would have been able to do a direct to Mars mission. That's the goal of this episode. And I haven't tested this out. Well, I, I, I've tested it that it could get off the launch pad. <laughs> that's that's about as much testing as I've done, okay? Uh, so we're, we're going to be risking it here, but um, the... I mean, I've built quite a lot of uh, rockets by now, so hopefully I've got the hang of this thing. Uh, the staging is a little bit different than the stats for what the C8... Ooh. Okay, good. Do not grab the bottom stage randomly. Alright, so... Like I was saying, the stages are a little bit different. The F1s regularly burn for 2 minutes and 35. The listed stats for the Nova... Well, let's just call it the C8, because uh, just to avoid any sort of... It's it's complicated. Uh, this, there's so many Novas, after all. So the C8 um, was 2 minutes and 37 seconds, and I've got at 240. So just be aware of that. I've extended that to extend my payload capacity. And then this is the second stage. There are our, our uh, eight J2s. And so nice and tight there. The reason it's X is because there's actually a J2X in the third stage. So I'm not making a exact replica. As you can tell from the fact that I was uh, I had changed the duration of the first stage. I'm not making an exact replica this time. I'm actually trying to see if uh, something with eight F1 engines at the bottom could have gotten to Mars and hopefully back. That's the goal. 
So I've made some modifications, including the J2Xs at top, but these are the J2s. And uh, they burn for six minutes, which is the same as for the second stage of the Saturn V, but not the same as the listed specs for this rocket, for the C8. And uh, I, I should mention that one of the reasons why uh, the Saturn V was ultimately decided upon for the moon mission was not only the new mode for the mission, but also the fact that the specs for the C8 uh, would mean that it wouldn't have been able to fit in the construction facility that it was meant for. And uh, we see some of that here. Second stage continues. Right through the roof. Third stage, there's the J2X. Uh, necessary because of the heavy payload. The J2X has the same ISP roughly as the J2, but no, I, actually I think it is better. It has better ISP and better thrust, but it's also heavier. That's right. And then I can't actually scroll any higher than this. There is a payload at the top, but we can't get to it. So this is the limit of my scrolling abilities. Okay, so uh, yeah, that is the Nova, and we've got quite a complicated payload. In fact, the lander was actually designed for my SLS attempts, and so I've been toying around with the lander quite a lot. It is a in-situ resource utilization lander, so it can mine keythane, and that is essential. The payload capacity of this is about 180 to 200 tons to low Earth orbit. But we're not concerned about low Earth orbit. Oh, I forgot to mention that about the third stage. The third stage um, burn time is very much extended. And that is because not only does it have to complete the orbital burn, it has, also has to burn for, for uh, Mars. And the specs of the NOVA assumes that the Mars transit stage will be separate from the third stage. So I'm, I'm changing that. Okay, so I think that's all the essentials. Since we can't get a very good look at this here, let's take it out to launch pad. Okay, well it's in the dark, so let's get into the light first. We'll eventually have to launch in the dark uh, to get the timing to the inclination right. So we are launching from Cape Canaveral of course and of course this very much requires uh, uh, joint reinforcement as you might expect but look at that mar magnificent thing. I've only got two astronauts in because there's only space for two in the lander and we're not gonna keep one in orbit around Mars. So this carries two and we only have food, water, oxygen for two. Uh, you'll note the oxygen is a large amount, and that's actually because of the fuel cell on the lander. So that's actually the fuel cell, and also this hydrogen is for the fuel cell. Otherwise, we're talking about uh, more than 750 days worth of food, though really they probably should have more than 900. But yeah, there you are, look at that. Look at how it doesn't really fit on the launch pad very well. Uh, the scale of it compared to the VAB, uh, the 4,687, 88 almost, tons. So we're going to try and launch this sucker and see how it works out. Now I happen to know that the three stages are not sufficient to get this on its uh, Mars traje trajectory. We will need to burn some of the engine on either service module or the lander and we'll see about that in a sec. Well, not in a second, quite a while because this thing is laggy. This is going to lag like crazy. All right, uh, I think all the good parts have been spoken for. We need to, so take a good look at this because we're gonna be launching at night. And so we need rendezvous planner. And I've got to put it there for a sec. And where do we need to go? We need to go not to the moon, but we happen to set the moon as a target so that we can get the inclination right. See, the moon is roughly, roughly the right inclination if we want to 
aim for any of the planets to cancel out the inclination produced by the ink uh, by by the ang axial tilt of the earth there we go okay go away all right so now we are currently 56 degrees off let's uh, time warp to fix that One realism overhaul mod that I have not installed in this in fl full oh boy it looks like it's tilting a bit I mean, in full disclosure it is is uh, remote tech I have not installed remote tech the others are all in but since this was uh, mainly meant to be a manned mission to Mars I decided to not to go with remote tech complications on this one. Okay, it's uh, the inclination of Mars is obviously not the same as the inclination to the Moon, so we'll just be approximate with that. Now I need it to be reasonably stable on the launch pad before I launch. I mean, obviously, uh, but throttle up, SAS on. This is a test flight, so you'll have to forgive me for not doing a lot of the dramatics I'm a little bit worried about what might happen and I need to be quick there is an abort and I need to be quick about that if I want to get that happening okay uh, less than 0.1 meter oh there was a 0.2 there about 0.1 meters per second in wiggle I think that's okay all right it's about to light the nearly 2 million units of oh not that uh, the 1.25 million units of kerosene and plenty of the liquid hydrogen in a sec here and you'll see the vessel mass go down by quite a lot very quickly unfortunately we won't get the full look of this because it is in the dark okay sounds like they're ready and off we go Uh, it's actually a quicker launch than it looks. Keep in mind. Yeah, take a look at how many seconds it is before the timer ticks one second. So actually this is getting off the launch pad very quickly. <laughs> Obviously I have timed it so that we are in the right position for a home and transfer to Mars. That's actually roughly the same position as the home and transfer to Duna by the way, about 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm gonna have smart ASS start its work. reasonably stable so far oh yes I'm using procedural parts rather than stretchy tanks or stretchy SRB so these are procedural parts all the way and also the newest procedural fairings so most of this structure is procedural parts and procedural fairings pre-programming in our the start of our gravity turn
Okay, let's begin. Reasonably stable here. Not bad. Okay, everything looks good. Bill isn't too panicky. Jeb is delighted, of course, as are we. So the base diameter, the, well, the diameter of this portion, the first stage, is 12.2 meters. The diameter of this stage, the second stage, is 10.1, and that's roughly the diameter of the Saturn V rocket. The diameter of the third stage was supposed to be 6.6, .6, which would have been the same as the third stage for the Saturn V, but I've upped it to 7 meters. So just for you to know. I've upped that one to 7 meters, and that's to accommodate the payload. I naturally didn't put any lights on here because, well, as if it's not laggy enough already. Getting about 5 frames per second here. Okay, all systems nominal. Launch progressing bit of a hiccup there. Going to 75 degrees. Okay, it's holding at 75 degrees very steadily. Very nice. Okay, we are past Mach 1. We are now supersonic. Sounds like everything is good in the in the capsule. Okay, going to 70 degrees. Now obviously we have to hit everything pretty efficiently if we want to get to Mars. So you'll see I'll hug the prograde vector pretty closely. In fact, uh, got just to a heading of 70, uh, 91 degrees, because it looks like we're a little bit off there. Okay, uh, this is going better than I expected. Uh, got uh, tweakable gimbals on it. Uh, the max angle is 5 degrees here, just for you to know. That is basically what's keeping this whole thing stable, the gimbal on the F1 engines. 
there's no huge reaction wheel or anything like that. This, uh, and of course the RCS is off. There is a small, uh, one of the standard 2.5 meter reaction wheels on the lander. That's, that's about it. Oh, that might be too much. I think I had not gone to 60 yet. Well, now that we're here... Okay, now just waiting for first stage cutout. Uh, there seems to be some sort of staging issue here. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, that's the first stage out. First stage separation and... The J2s. Well, this is very loud. Okay, I think I'm gonna jettison the launch escape. That's it for the launch escape system. Now let me try and figure out what's going on with uh, stage two. Okay, this engine should not be here. I don't know what engine that is, but it's definitely not supposed to be there. Just noticed that I need true altitude on my custom info window. So let's add that in. Okay, well. Everything looks good so far. We're aiming for an apoapsis of about 350. 350 by 350 kilometers. However, uh, I'm going to let... Well, yeah, about 350 by 350. I think that's fine. That'll be fine. Okay, we're coming pretty close to the end of this burn here. Theoretically a 6 minute burn, but in real time it was more like 20 minutes, so you'll have to forgive me for cutting most of it out. But it's it's been a long haul, a very smooth ride. Uh, I'm very impressed, mainly by Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. But also sum up by the fact that I seem to be much better at these sorts of things than I used to be.
I think I'll keep it at 10 degrees. And we're not too far off from our intended apoapsis of 350. Looking pretty good so far. Okay, that's that. Okay, separation of the second stage. And the third stage is lit. All right, so Let's see if we can put about 200 tons in orbit. This stage is gimbling at 6 degrees maximum. Surprise it's not uh, giving us a stage delta V. That's a little bit annoying. Actually that's a lot annoying. I hope that uh, that doesn't remain an issue here. I don't know why it should be. Is it because this engine is out of place? Why is there only one engine? Oh, the, the other engine is for some reason floating over there. Of course, there's a service module engine and the lander engine. Those are the two engines. I don't know which one this one is right now. At least this separation has to occur, so that's fine. That's acceptable. Okay, yeah, all systems. Nominal. Funny, they've produced. Oh, uh, it's because we time warped on the launch pad, isn't it? They produced about uh, half a day a piece, so almost a day's worth of waste and waste water. Didn't need to consume the oxygen or, and produce carbon dioxide, though, because they were just sitting on the launch pad. Well, I really wish I knew how much delta V I had here. Maybe the delta V statistics here will work? Yes, they do. wonder why they work here but not here. It's very strange. It's because there's this other stage floating around somewhere. This, this one here. I don't know what that is. Come on. So hoping to keep at least 3,000 meters per second. No guarantees though. Let's uh, smush that up a bit. Have that hang up there. Lots of windows to keep in order here. Uh, no point looking at this for the upper two stages because they they're not really shown properly here. This is actually the lander. So the lander has about three thousand five hundred delta V, same as the service module. Though the service module might have to burn some of that off, pushing both of them. So this is about as heavy as I could make things uh, on an attempt to launch a Mars mission on a single rocket. No, no preliminaries, no little uh, ISRU lander units sent ahead of time. So that is what we're looking at here. So this is not Mars direct the way that uh, was actually envisioned in that mission plan. So trusty J2X here. And that's not the only modern day touch I guess you could say that I've got. Of course I've got uh, uh, an engine burning methane and liquid oxygen for the in-situ 
resource utilization units on the lander. So we are going to be we're going to be drilling for keythane, but converting it to methane. <laughs> I guess that's fair enough. In in reality, on Mars, what we'd be doing is sucking up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, uh, possibly drilling for water, and combining the hydrogen in the water and the uh, carbon in the CO2 to make methane. And uh, but if we don't have water, we would have to bring the hydrogen along, which is a lot of volume, but not that much mass. It's better to get the water anyway because then you can produce the oxygen as well. I mean, you you you'll get the oxygen anyway, but you get a lot more oxygen if you can hit the water. No, it takes a lot of electricity to do electrolysis, so that might be a an obstacle. Engine engine igniter is a thing, so we do have limited ignitions and fuel flow. I'm more or less relying on hydrogen burn off boil off in order to settle the propellants in this engine. I don't have any alleged rockets. Okay, we're uh, coming up on a point where I need to maybe kill the third stage here. Try and get this right. Okay, everything has gone very well so far, and the only question is how far off our inclination is from that of Mars. I, I'm hoping for less than 2 degrees, but anything more than that, then it's going to be difficult. Okay, that's good enough for me. Uh, 339 by 330. Looks good. And for now, we'll orient prograde. Okay, as everything settles down here, looks like we've got about 3024 delta V here. Though that tends to change depending on what direction we're pointing in. No, I, I think it's, it's actually because the engine is gimbling. If the engine is not pointed directly behind, it, uh, it uh, means that you're not getting the full value of the fuel. And since we're trying to turn here very, very, very slowly, the Smart ASS is also gimbling the engine in the direction that we want to point at. Okay, so... Target Mars.